and shalom, everybody. All right, a little housekeeping. Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Barakatham. Okay, we are speaking the ancient Hebrew language in which there is no E, there is no O, and there is no U. There's only A's and I's. What we just said is the Most High, that's his name, in the name of Christ, that's his name, bless you. That's what I said to you. That's what you said back to me. Now I'm going to bless you. Ya Baraka Yahawa, Waya Shamarka, Ya Ar Yahawa, Panyawa Aliyaka Waya Kanka, Ya Sha'a Yahawa, Panyawa Aliyaka Waya Shamlaka, Shalawam Aman. We're going to translate that into English. We said, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. We got one more blessing. It goes like this. Anaya ahab yahawa wa ahab ha thawara aman. We said I love Yahawa. That is the name of the father. And I love the law. That's in modern Hebrew, that's pronounced Torah. In ancient Hebrew, it's pronounced Thawara. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm very excited that you are all here. In the course of our message, we are going to be using the name Yahawashai in place of the name that you commonly know of, which is Jesus. Because in the ancient Hebrew, there is no letter J. So when he was alive and walking on the earth, there's not a single person who called him by the name Jesus. The letter did not exist for approximately 800 years after his death is when they created the letter J. So when I say Yahweh Shai, you know that I am talking about Jesus Christ. Let's show them what we're talking about tonight's message. What does it say on the screen? Commitment and dedication. Commitment and dedication. These are two very confusing words. <laughs> Commitment. Most people are afraid of that. And dedication. Pastor, that sounds like work. I don't know if I even want to do that. This is part one of a two. Did I just throw up two and say one? I did that. Because you know there's only three types of people in the world. Those that can count and those that can't. Okay, this is part one of a two-part message. Because tomorrow night at sundown, we will start celebrating the Feast of Dedication. So we are going to be rededicating ourselves. Now, last week we did an amazing message on what it means as the world commonly calls Hanukkah. That is translated into dedication. We're going to be taking this whole week. It is a seven day feast with an eighth day added to it to rededicate ourselves. Go ahead and show them a slide real quick. We are going to be now normally we would go out into the wilderness and we would be in some tents and it would be very intense. It'd be cold out there, but this time, we are going to be doing a lock-in here at the church tomorrow night at sundown. We're going to have our feast. Our colors are blue, so come wearing your festive blue. Um, our potluck is going to be Italian food, only clean food, lawful according to the scriptures. And we are actually going to be putting up some canopies here in the church and as one big family just hanging out here all night in the church until the next morning. Amen. So that's going to be awesome. That's happening Saturday night when the sun goes down. We'll probably be getting here at 8 p.m. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's see. What do we got? The Feast of Dedication is tomorrow night. It runs from December 9th through December 16th. This is calculated using the new moon. When is the new moon? What phase is that? The very first time that you can see light after it has been dark, that's when the moon is new. Okay? So, let's talk about this word commitment for a second. What is a commitment? What is it? Huh? Promise. promise. It's a promise. It's a covenant. It's an agreement. Right? Okay, now watch. It's a promise to do something or give something. A promise to be loyal to someone or something, right? If you're married, you have a marriage commitment. It's also the attitude of someone who works very hard to do or support something. So like, I'm committed to your success. I'm working very hard to make sure that you are successful. That, that word commitment works in there. I'm going to give you guys an example of the commitment from the scriptures. And then we're going to dive into these scriptures. Now, there was a time when Yahweh Shai, 
Jesus, was walking around with his guys. He had 12 guys that would always walk around with them. And he said something that made every single one of them question their commitment. Not only did he have these 12, but there was thousands of other people following him because he would, on a regular basis, break them off with fish sandwiches, right? He would feed the homeless. They would have some fish. He would break that fish and he would give it to the people and he would feed them with fish and bread. Does that make sense? And at one point he says, some of y'all don't really even like me. Some of you guys just follow me because I got that fish and that bread, you just follow me because I'm popular and you see other people follow him. And when he said that, it questioned everybody's commitment. Let me show you this story from the scriptures. Let's begin in John chapter 6, verse 64. The scripture says, but there are some of you that believe not. For Yahweh Shai knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Give me verse 65. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Okay, now watch. I want you to see what verse are we on? This is John chapter 6, verse 65. I'm going to show you the only scripture in the New Testament that has 6, 6, and 6 in it. And I want you to see what it says. Give me verse 66. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What does that mean? What's that? That's a mark of a beast right there. You're not following the king no more. You've decided to go back because you weren't called anyway. Only one scripture in the New Testament that has that address. From that time, many of his disciples, what does that mean? They were starting to receive the discipline. That's what it means to be a disciple. You're receiving discipline. You're learning some good stuff. Did you guys know that you can do the right thing for the wrong reason? You can do it right. You can show up to church every single week and you just there to see who's cute. <laughs> you ain't, you just there to see, oh, so-and-so was wearing this and gossip. You're doing the right thing showing up, but you're doing it for the wrong reason. Okay, now watch this. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Are they still his disciples? Yes. No, <laughs> they're, they're quitters. I like that. Okay, now watch. Here's the questioning of the commitment. Give me verse 67. Then said Yahweh Shai unto the twelve, will ye also go away? What is he doing? Testing them. He's testing them. He already knows the answer to the question. When he asks you the question, it's so that you can know the answer to the question. It's an opportunity to repent. He said, oh, you saw everybody left. They shook. You guys going to leave too? Let's see what they say. Give me verse 68. It says, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You see what Peter did right there? Quickly, he confessed what he believed. He, he confirmed his commitment. Give me verse 69. He's going to go even further. He says, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ. That means Messiah. The son of the living Yah. He said, Oh, no, we fully committed. <laughs> We've forsaken everything, everyone, all of our false beliefs that we believed before, all of our own opinions and traditions and desires. We left all of that alone so that we could come with you because you have something that nobody else has. What did he say that he has? The words. What? The words of eternal life. See, when you find the words of eternal life, you have to commit to those words. Those words become the guiding force in your life. You're like, I'm not sure what to do. None of us should ever say that anymore. When you get to your wits end, you should pray. That's, you know to do that, right? Like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you do quit saying that. You sound like you don't have no faith. You don't know what to do. Pray. If you, you don't know what to say, ask somebody to pray for you. But you know that. Prayer is the answer. Okay. So they reconfirm their commitment in that portion of the story. Now, commitment is based on an agreement. And where there is no agreement, there is no commitment. Follow me. If someone expects something of you, but they have not spoken it to you clearly, and you have not agreed to it, then you do not have a commitment. Your relationship is made on an assumption. Let me show you what it looks like. I assumed that it was okay for me to stay out with the guys till three in the morning because you never said nothing about it before. I assumed that it was okay for me to talk to other women in the middle of the night and send them pictures and texts and all that stuff. Why? 
Because you never said nothing about it before. We never made an agreement. A lot of our relationships are based entirely on the assumption that the other person is going to be okay with it. And I'm not just talking about our relationships with people. A lot of our relationships with the most high, we live this relationship assuming that he's going to be okay with what we do. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, he said thou shalt not. And we're like, he's going to be fine with that. You know, he playing, right? He got a sense of humor. We do that on a regular basis. That's not a commitment. That's not a commitment. That's not an agreement. Because a commitment brings two things. If you're taking notes, you want to write this down. A commitment is going to bring consistency and it's going to bring expectation. You guys got that? A commitment is going to bring consistency and expectation. It's like saying, now you know what to expect of me and you can expect it on a regular basis. It makes me a lot more even kill. Are you guys familiar with that is even kill? I'm not up here and down here and back there and you don't know what to expect. No, my commitment is to the most high and to you as a child of the most high. I am committed. So I'm going to be very consistent in our relationship. You'll know when you have a commitment because it will consist. Let me tell you this. There's no such thing as sometimes committed. You see, that don't work. That don't work. Are you committed, bro? Sometimes. You know, I show up on Tuesday. What? No, there's no such thing as sometimes committed. Either you are or you are not. Does that make sense? Okay. Commitment is when you agree to take responsibility to do something. Now, you agree to take the responsibility to do something. That's the easy part. Here's the hard part. You work past all the obstacles, all the pain, all the adversity, all the costs to accomplish the thing that you have agreed to do. That's the commitment. It's easy to make a commitment. I could say, um, uh, on Sunday, we're going to have a car wash. Who's going to show up? And some of y'all going to be like, yeah, pastor, I'll be there. And Sunday, I roll around and y'all be like, but I decided to sleep in though. You made the commitment, but you missed the dedication, which is the time that you set aside to meet your commitments. It's not just going to happen. It doesn't work that way. You have to be committed and you have to have some dedication to go along with it. Ain't that right? Nathan, so, so how did you get so buff? You just woke up like that, huh? Right? I know people. So what I do is I just sprinkle water on my muscles and I just wake up buff like this. That never happened to anybody. Don't it? In order to grow muscles, what does it take? Some commitment and some dedication. Okay, well, I'm committed, but I'm also committed to these donuts. I'm also committed to overeating. I'm never going to get in shape until my commitment is put together with some dedication. Does that make sense? Are you guys tracking with me? <laughs> okay, now watch. The Most High made a commitment to the children of Israel. And we also made a commitment to him. Let me show you. Because this is the wording of the first covenant. Give me Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Here's his proposal. He says... Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed. See how there's a comma right there? What's a comma mean? You need to pause. You need to think about what he just said. What did he tell you to do? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little cynical. I would have turned and be like, um, uh, you didn't tell me to do nothing yet. So how can I agree to do what you have not yet told me to do? If I agree to do what you have not yet told me to do, what is that called? That's faith. He's making a faith agreement. Like when we make agreements with people, we do it in good faith, right? Expecting that they're going to hold up their end of the bargain. He has not even told us what to do yet. And he says, I want you to do what I tell you to do. That's the first part of the agreement. Now take a look. It says, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. What's your part of the agreement? What you got to do? Obey his voice and keep his covenant. How many things are in this thing? What if I do just one? <laughs> I'm just going to do one. You know what? I'm going to obey your voice, but I'm not going to keep your covenant. Well, then you're not in the commitment. You haven't made a commitment. See, he set this up as the proposal. Let me show you Israel's response. Give me verse eight real quick. Jump down to verse eight. It says, and all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord, when I say the Lord, I'm going to say Yahweh because that is his name. Okay. And all that Yahweh hath spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto Yahweh. 
So what do we have right here? We have an agreement, ain't that right? He said, do it. And we say, yeah, we're going to do that. Do we do it? Okay. But what was it that he wanted us to do? You got to see this is very important because the state of your life depends on these two things. What did he say? What's the first thing he said? Don't put it back on the screen. Obey my voice and keep my covenant. Okay. Obey my voice and keep this agreement. Okay. Let me show you what happened because we know that we didn't do it. So give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and give me verse 15 because he warns us and he says, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy Yah, thy Allah Hayim, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these, what does it say? Curses. Curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If we decide that we are not going to keep our part of the bargain, he has a whole list of curses. Why do we still think that we're going to get blessed when we broke the agreement? That's not how it works. You can't break the agreement and expect to get blessed in the middle of breaking the agreement. Does that make sense? Okay. So we know the curses. We're not going to get into those Deuteronomy 28 uh, verse 15 through 68 curses. 15 through 68, he outlines every curse. And if you look at your life, you can say, yep, that's me. Unfortunately, that's me. That's me. But he says, if you come back to the agreement, I'll remove all of these curses. I'll put them on your enemies and I will bless you. Is that right? Does that make sense? He's, he's very merciful. The feast of dedication, which we will be celebrating tomorrow night, is the perfect time to recommit yourself to the father. To get back into his voice. He said, obey my voice and keep my covenant. Obey my voice, keep my covenant. Let me show you how it works. Because a lot of times we don't know how to enter into a commitment. So the most high gave me this. Go ahead and show him a slide real quick. I want to see if you guys can commit to this. Not for me, but for yourself. Each day for the next seven days, commit to reading one chapter in the book of Micah. This is the reason why. The book of Micah is the only book in the whole Bible that only has seven chapters. That makes it real easy. You can keep track of what chapter you're on. And the, the book of Micah reinforces the dedication and commitment that he made to us. And how once we recommit and rededicate to him, we get delivered. So for the next seven days, read one chapter. That's an easy commitment. And on that eighth day, just reflect on how the things that you have read apply to your life. It's a very small commitment to make. Does that make sense? Because a lot of times people are like, Pastor, I don't know where to start reading in the Bible. It's a big old book. I'm just going to start in Genesis. I'm like, you going to start in Genesis? You need to, you got some stuff going on in your life. You need to start over here in Matthew. <laughs> start in Micah. Seven books. Se seven chapters, seven days. Does that make sense? This will cover your commitment. This will bring you back into it. Because in that book, you're going to hear his voice. And you're going to see what he said in his covenant. I want to talk about this for a second. Some of you just now, as I challenged you to do that thing right there, you started thinking about your schedule and you're like, oh man, I got this on Tuesdays and that on Wednesdays and got to work on Thursdays. And you're like, ah, and in your mind, you said these words, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. No such thing. Did you guys know there's no such thing? You, you actually cannot try. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And that's what the commitment is. I'll try is lack of commitment. It's no deniability. You're like, yeah, I'll try. They'll be like, um, so are you going to come to church with me? And what do they say? I'll try. What does that mean? You're going to get dressed and get in your car and just sit in the parking lot? That's trying. I'm trying to get there. You're not driving nowhere. It doesn't make any sense. Either you're going to do it or you're not. For that reason, the scripture says this. Watch. Give me. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. The scripture says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. What you got to do? If you're going to do it, you got to do it. And you got to do it to the fullest. Don't be like, well, I decided I'm going to show up. I don't know how long I'm going to stay. I don't even know how I got here. There is no tribe. When all is said and done in the father's eyes, either you did it or you did it. Are you trying to be obedient to him? Are you trying to keep the covenant? Are you trying to hear his voice? What does that mean? You're failing 
Because when you're doing, you're doing. If I had a bike on this stage and I jumped on this bike and I started pedaling, what am I doing? I'm not trying to ride the bike, am I? I'm doing it. But if I started getting wobbly and there was a fire hydrant and bow and I smashed into it, I'd, I'd probably end up in the hospital. But <laughs> you need to learn. You need to get a skateboard, Pastor. That's what you need to do. Okay, watch. Our father is a father of results. When you learn to remove the word trying from your everyday vocabulary, you'll start to produce results. He can't try. You guys know that, right? Anything that he tries to do instantly happens. There's two things that the Bible says about the father. He can't lie and he can't try. Now, here's the opposite because Satan, all he can do is lie and all he can do is try. He's trying right now. Some of y'all getting text messages and they're distracting your mind from the message that is happening. Something is going on and Satan is constantly trying to pull you away from the father. And here's the interesting thing about try. See, it's not a commitment. So the, the results are inconsistent. Sometimes it work, huh? Sometimes Satan gets you and you be like, what squirrel? You looking around, you totally forgot what was happening in the message. Sometimes you stay focused. Sometimes, sometimes it's because he's trying. His trying produces inconsistent results. When it's time for you to pray, what do you do? I pray. I don't try. Lord, well, I would say something if I knew what to say. But since I don't know what to say, I'm just going to talk about how I don't know what to say. What? That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense at all. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And when you do it, you expect results. He is a God of results. If you're not producing results, what does that mean? You're probably still trying instead of doing. All right. Replace this word. Somebody say, I will. I will. Oh, that's powerful right there. I will. Now, watch this. I'll try. That's weak. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. Y'all need to cut that out of your vocabulary almost instantly because I'll try. What does that mean? How was name the one thing there is no thing name the thing that Christ said hey you, oh you need a blessing <laughs> I'll try he didn't say that he didn't say that either he did it or he didn't do it so us as followers why do we keep coming up with these this week I'll try just say I will or I will not does that make sense let give give it to me let your yay let your yay yay Give me Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. The scripture says, but let your communication be, yeah, yeah. That's what it says. Some people pronounce it yay. Yay is Y-A-Y. -Y. It don't say yay. It says yeah, yeah, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. What does that mean? It produces evil. It comes from an evil intention. I tell you I'm going to try and I know I'm not going to do it. That's evil. I'm deceiving you. He says, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Watch, let me show you. He's going to reword this. Give me James, James chapter five, verse 12. James is Christ's brother. Okay. He says this, but above all things, some things, a few things <laughs> above all things, my brethren swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yeah be yeah and your nay be nay lest ye fall into condemnation that's an instruction right there that's a commandment right there does that make sense you guys feeling that okay watch this anybody in here ever tried to quit smoking but was still buying cigarettes you trying to quit smoking but you still buying cigarettes no you're that's why you haven't quit smoking why because you're trying to do it stop buying cigarettes and stop bumming them off of the other people and guess what you did you stopped smoking that's pretty simple right okay you guys feel me? Let's talk about breaking your word. Because if your yes is yes and your no is no, then you are establishing your commitment. When you establish your commitment, it's not cool for you to just be like, yeah, I said I would do it and then I didn't do it. If I said I was going to do it and I didn't do it, I need to repent. My word needs to be a bond. Yes. That's, how, that's how the word of Christ is. It was a bond. See, there's only two things that anybody has of any value to someone else that you can give them. You can give them love and you can give them your word. You can give me some money. I'm just going to spend it. I'm literally going to give it away. Okay, but you give me your love. I'm going to cherish that. You give me your word. I should be able to cherish that just like it's love. Does that make sense? Now, if I can't trust your word, 
How am I supposed to trust your love? Because which one is easier to give? It's easier to give somebody your word. So we ought to be keeping our word. Give me Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. The scripture says, commit thy works unto Yahweh, and thy thoughts shall be established. What does he say you got to do? The things that you were planning to do, you have to commit them unto the Lord. And what's he going to do? He will establish the things that you were thinking of in your mind. What, what caused it? The commitment caused it. Faith is a commitment. Following Christ is a commitment. We have to make this commitment every single day. Every conversation that we have with somebody, remember that you are committed to being an example of Jesus, an example of Christ. Does that make sense? Okay. This is going to step on some people's toes. I hope you didn't just get a pedicure, but watch. <laughs> we need to stop trying to please everyone and focus on pleasing the Father. That's what we need to do. Before you answer anything, ask yourself, will my father allow me to do that? When you run off and make a commitment that you have no intention of keeping and you lock yourself into a pattern of breaking your word, that's what the yay, yay and the nay, nay is going to stop. It's going to break that pattern because a lot of us, we'd be like, oh, yeah, brother, I'm going to be there. And we know we're not going to be there. That's evil. That's a pattern that we have. We can break that pattern by saying what we mean, come on, and meaning what we say. Give me Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians is written by the Apostle Paul. Look at what he says. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, and then he puts a comma. He's like, that's what you say you're going to do and what you actually do. Sometimes those are the same thing. Sometimes they're different things. He said, but whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. All in the name of Adonai Yahawashai. Giving thanks unto Yah and the Father by him. So who, who do I do it like I'm doing it to or doing it for? I do it like I am working directly for the Father. Like, like the Son himself said, I need you to do that. And I said, yes, I'm committed and I will make sure that it gets done. That's how I'm supposed to do things. Jump down to verse 23 for me real quick. The scripture says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So when you make a commitment with somebody, there's an angel standing there behind that person. And he pokes his head out. Oh, you you're going to do that? I'm going to write it down right now. I, I expect to see you there next week. There is an angel writing down this thing. Next week shows up and you're like this. Ah, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm sick. I can't really come in. There's an angel right there. He pops his head out. You not sick. He writes that down right there. You're going to be, the scripture says, you will be judged for every idle word that you speak. What does that mean? Stop lying. <laughs> let your yes be yes and let your no be no. That's what that means. Give me verse 24. The scripture says, knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. What is our inheritance? It's made up of two things. Land. It's land. Okay. But what good is the land? If I don't live forever, the inheritance is the land and eternal life. Isn't that what Christ has the words of who else can we go to? Nobody else has the words of eternal life. Okay, so knowing that of Adonai, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve who? What does it say? For ye serve who? You serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You serve Yahweh Shai. You serve the king. Well, how are you living your life? Give me verse 25. The scripture says, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Does he have favorites? He don't have favorites. He has commitments. He made a commitment to you. You made a commitment to him. You stick to it. He loves you. You break that commitment. He says, you stay right there. I got to go focus on Tom over here. He's still keeping my commitment. Right? When you go back to the commitment, he says, oh, I'm glad you came back. <laughs> and then you have his attention. It's no work like that in a relationship. Like you just got a new girlfriend or whatever. You, you text her all the time. You're like, ah. And then when she stops responding to you or she does something that you don't like, you just, 
later, <laughs> right? Later. I, I give back with you later. And then when she comes back to the commitment, you pick up the phone. You're like, girl, you know I missed you, <laughs> right? It's, it works the same way. Relationships with the father should be reflected in our relationship with his children. I only got a couple more. I want, I want you to get this. If you don't get nothing else from the message, your commitment is your investment. Do you believe that you can get something for nothing? That's called magic. And it's black. That's black magic. You think you're going to get something for nothing that is magic, that is witchcraft. We don't believe in that. Your commitment is your investment and you will have no return on your investment until you follow through on your commitment. Everything in life that you're hoping for and praying for is just on the other side of your commitment. What do I have to do? I have to keep this commitment and get to, to get to the things that I desire. Give me Psalms chapter 31 verse 5. The scripture says, into thine hand, I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Yahweh, Allahayim, Shal Amarath, Lord God of truth. Okay, now watch this. I'm, I'm going to show you five things that you examine your own life. You might want to write these things down. Your life would immediately change if you could figure out how to be more committed to these five things. We're going to run through them real quick. The first thing is your relationship with the father, because nothing can come in front of your relationship with the father. Ain't that the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. So you need to make sure that you are committed to him. What does that mean? We made an agreement and I fulfill my part of the agreement to the best of my ability. Yes, I'm going to slip, but I'm going to stand up again. That's a commitment. Okay. The second thing. Your relationships. Get re-involved in your relationships. I'm not just talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, or your marriage. I'm talking about people that you haven't talked to for a long time that you are certain that the Most High put that person into your life for a reason. And if something happened and now you haven't talked to that person, but you believe that he put you together, you need to recommit to that relationship. Put some new energy in that relationship. If you are a parent and your child has been going off, you need to recommit to that relationship. There's so many things like this one we could have talked about all night because it's not just when I say relationship, people usually think with a spouse or but my relationship with my child is very important to me. Does that make sense? I know some of you guys still have your parents. If your relationship with your parents is very important to you, recommit to that relationship. Reach out to them and open up a line of communication. This third thing is your job. <laughs> now some of y'all was like, why are you bringing up that pastor? Why are you bringing up? You know why? Because they pay you. And I can almost guarantee that before you got that job, you did something special for that job. What did you do? You prayed for that job. You didn't have no job. What'd you do? Lord, I need a job. What'd you get? You got a job. And now you don't want to show up on time. You literally want to be checking Facebook while you're at your desk. They don't pay you to check Facebook. They don't pay you to do anything other than work that job. Be, re be recommitted to your job. Yeah. As if you're working for who? As if you're working for Christ. So Christ knows, look, you, you start work at nine o'clock, but you in the parking lot at nine o'clock. Christ knows what time it is worth better than anybody else. You were supposed to already be working, not getting prepared for work. Recommit yourself to your job and things will change in your finances. Okay. Recommit yourself to your dreams, your goals, and your gifts. Imagine where you would be if you just stay committed to the, to the things that he gave you. You had a desire to start a business. Recommit to that. That's what the Feast of Dedication is all about. Recommitting and rededicating. Recommit to that dream that you have of, oh, I wrote a song. I want to get in the studio and record this song. I want to play guitar. I want to, whatever it is that he's given you the ability to do. You guys remember we read a verse earlier in Ecclesiastes that said, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, how am I supposed to do it? With my might. That's what I mean when I'm like, recommit to these things. Put in some effort to this stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. Here's that last thing is number five. It's your salvation. The scripture says, work out. Work out what? Come on. 
Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You have to be committed to your salvation. This is not something that is casual and careless where you're like, yeah, you know, I'll work on it next Tuesday. Kind of like the gym. We're like, oh, no, I'll just go next week. It'll still be there. You have to work on your salvation every single day. Tomorrow's not promised, is it? Okay, so we are always working on our salvation. Now, out of those five things, who wrote down all five of them? Go tell me what they are. Okay, relationship with the Father. Relationship, relationship with friends and family and loved ones. Go ahead. My job. Go ahead. My dreams, goals, and gifts, and and my salvation. Look at that. If you just committed over this next seven days saying, I'm going to work those things out. Seven days, one week from now, your life could be completely turned around. It, it's true. It's real. It's real. All right. Let me share with you one last verse. We're going to grab these drums and we're going to sing a couple songs. Give me Psalms chapter 37, verse 5. Here's the proof that it works. The scripture says, commit thy way unto Yahweh. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he, what's he going to do? And he, he's going to bring it to pass. You believe it. You believe it. If you believe it, then you'll do it. Amen. Amen. This is the message that I have for you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.